We need to once again talk about a rolling recession. I have yet to see any serious news media or economist talk about the fact that we may be experiencing our first kind of long rolling recession. This rolling recession may have started four to six quarters ago. And given that the Fed is obviously on the cusp of starting a rate cutting cycle, I think it bears at least some early discussion. Could this rate cutting cycle kind of mark the end of a rolling recession? Now, if you look historically at the recession charts, uh, if you look at and review any of the videos we've done with Mr. Dan Bird on Sundays, you know that historically, historically, recessions occur after the first rate cut. Right. If you go back and look at the Great Recession after the first rate cut, you go back and look at the dot com bust after the first rate cut and so on and so on and so on. However, those recessions, as we've talked about a lot, were kind of all in recessions. The entire economy tanked. We might we might be experiencing a rolling recession that actually ends with the first rate cut cycle. Now, we've talked a lot about mortgage being in a depression, the mortgage business. By some counts, there are 60% less mortgage originators today than there were two years ago. I just got a report this morning about NAR, National Association of Realtors, uh, down 100,000 folks. Uh, the real estate depression lost 72,000 agents in 2023, that's down 14%. The real estate industry is clearly in a depression. Manufacturing. Manufacturing has also been in a recession. Uh, we have seen the um, Empire State Manufacturing, which is essentially a survey of New York manufacturers, uh, really be in recession territory for about 18 months, meaning contraction. Well, we just got the first of many economic reports this week, and the Empire State Manufacturing surprised nearly everyone. Empire State Manufacturing last month was a negative 4.7. It was forecast or expected to be a negative 4. Again, on this survey, folks, a negative number means contraction. Bad. Well, folks, it popped. It jumped to 11.5. Now, this is the best reading since April of 2022. Do you all remember what happened in and around April? I think it actually started in August. We had that Jackson Hole meeting where Jerome Powell came out and said, I'm not messing around. Well, it's possible. Again, you never get too excited about a single data point. But it appears that maybe just maybe manufacturing is on the rebound. Now, again, we talked about mortgage and the great refi boom that clearly has started. I think the mortgage industry is out of depression, maybe into recession territory. But if rates continue to fall, that will move them into expansion, meaning positive GDP. Real estate industry likely still at low levels unless rates fall, in my opinion, sub five. The move up buyer might get interested at five and a half, but I don't think they're really interested till five. But manufacturing, manufacturing jumping to 11.5 on the cusp of rate cuts. What do lower rates mean to manufacturers, you might ask? Well, lower rates in manufacturing means that manufacturers could get capital investments, they can borrow, they could buy inventory, they could buy supplies. It's possible. I'm not saying likely. I'm not saying probable. I'm just saying it is still absolutely possible that we are experiencing a rolling recession. And because we really haven't had one ever of this duration, the economists, the experts, they just have no idea what is actually occurring. So I will be, uh, I will be on the lookout for other economists highlighting the fact that a rolling recession might be occurring. And again, to Highlight what that means to you. A rolling recession is below trend growth. 
think below 1%, it might be negative. But in a rolling recession, it doesn't have to be negative. It just has to be below trend. So again, Empire State Manufacturing, big surprise, big upside. Uh, we will see what's going on with mortgage applications and the like on Wednesday. Uh, I think we get pending home sales this week. I do expect those to be a new low, uh, but we shall see. Uh, I want to welcome two new school members. In the last 24 hours, we had two folks join the One Rental at a Time School. We are trying to grow the middle class. Uh, I want to congratulate Samuel and Henry uh, for joining school. Thank you for uh, the support. Make sure you introduce yourself. Reach out to all these amazing people. Uh, you won't be disappointed. Uh, yesterday, folks, in the video with Mr. Dan Bird, uh, we talked a lot about inflation in the future. Dan Bird pulled up the inflation chart, and we talked about what's called the base effect. If you don't remember what the base effect is, that is basically, it's like a roller coaster. You can think of a roller coaster with 12 cars, and every report, the last car falls off and is replaced by a new front car, basically. So what is happening with the base effect is the next couple of reports, there's actually one more report with a large base effect. Think drop a big number, add a small number. Then we have a couple of months of basically flat. And then we, we go on a streak of three or four months heading until May, May of 2025, where Dan Bird is postulating, guessing, forecasting that CPI, CPI headline, CPI headline, could not only fall below 2%, in his opinion, it likely will. And he thinks CPI headline by May could be 1.5%. 1.5. Now, again, remember what the Fed is trying to do. The Fed is trying to find this mysterious, unknown, R-star, neutral rate. The rate at which the Fed funds rate could be where it's not expansionary or contraction. Today, it is guesstimated estimated to be between three and three and a half. That's with a CPI reading of roughly two and a half. If inflation falls another hundred basis points to one and a half, that R star or neutral rate or whatever the fancy folks want to call it, it might be two and a half to 3%. So again, this rate cutting cycle, should it start on Wednesday and it likely will, uh, it might be a quick 200 to 300 basis points cuts if inflation behaves. Again, that is a huge if. We should never forget, never forget, never forget that the early 80s had a double top, right? It went up, it fell, and it went up, and it went up higher. That second bat of inflation, you know, the 1981-82 was ugly, nasty, and really, really hurt the U.S. economy. That is something I am particularly afraid of. Uh, but again, we will just be paying attention as we move forward. Something that I noticed this morning is the gap, the delta between the two-year treasury, which is kind of the gold star for where the Fed is going, and the Fed rate is the, the gap, the delta is the largest it's ever been, ever. Larger than 08, larger than 1989. So what does that mean? Well, if history means anything, it means we're on the cusp of a 50 basis point cut on Wednesday. Now, you remember what I said yesterday. I still believe this. I like, I'm confident in this. I don't know what the Fed's going to do, but I do believe this. If the Fed cuts a quarter, they are concerned. If they cut a half, they are afraid. And I think that's where that's where I stand uh, heading into Wednesday. But again, with this large gap between the two-year and the Fed funds at a negative 1.69%, it is screaming 50 basis point cut. Want to shout out the uneducated economist. The uneducated economist did a video the other day. It appears that lumber, these are his numbers, not mine. This is his area of expertise, not mine. The lumber is under $500 per thousand. Folks, you are going to see curtailments. You are going to see lumber mills shut down. It is not profitable selling uh, you know, lumber per thousand at $500. So what does this mean? Again, play 
Chess. If lumber mills and all of these providers up the food chain are forced to shut down because it's not profitable, what will happen? Well, slowly, supply will be bled off. And then, should we get into the new year and who knows, rates go down, the new president enacts some first home time buyer credit thingy-mabobber, what could happen? Well, all I could say is we've seen this movie before. Lumber will spike, costs will spike, homes will sell off the just sell quickly, and we could be having that second double top of inflation that I am so scared about. On top of that, Simon and I communicated yesterday. He wants to come back and talk to our school community. You're going to have an opportunity to interact with Simon, the uneducated economist, this Sunday at 8 a.m. If you go to our school platform and you go to the calendar, you will see the Zoom link for you to interact with Simon. It's very likely that you might be one of 15, 20, 25 folks in that room. You are going to be able to ask Simon questions. You're going to be able to get your answers done. Uh, this is something that I love to provide inside the school community. Not only is Simon going to be available for you, but tomorrow, 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 Tuesday, you're going to get Anna Kelly. Again, go to the calendar. You will see a link for Anna Kelly. And on Wednesday, we're just having a busy week this week. We set up a Zoom link for Dion and Matt and I, the three amigos. Uh, a lot of you want to ask us questions. Uh, so again, if you are a part of school, you have three opportunities to interact with folks today or this week. Um, they will be recorded. They are all at 8 a.m., I believe. Yeah, 8, 8, and 8, 8 a.m. Uh, so if you have the opportunity to join, great. If not, we will record and load those later in the day. Uh, so hopefully you enjoy those. Don't miss out. This is part of the value. Uh, of one rental at a time. So now that we've had CPI and PPI, the experts are now doing the math to calculate PCE. Again, PCE is the third inflation indicator, and it will come out in roughly two weeks. Uh, CPI headline is expected to be 2.3. 2.3, that is down, down from 2.5. However, unfortunately, core, core is expected to go up. Core is expected to go to 2.7 from 2.6. Think about that. Think about core, right? Remember what the Fed has told us. They've told us forever that core is the most important. If, if they cut on Wednesday and if they cut big on Wednesday, which is looking more and more likely, and then they get a PCE core reading that goes up, how fun is that conversation going to be? Uh, at the next Fed meeting. But again, I digress. Looks like the uh, chances of a 50 basis point cut have completely rebounded. If you remember, I think it was a short seven, possibly 10 days ago, the odds of a 50 basis point cut were as high as 80%. They collapsed, they fell, they crashed all the way to about eight or 9% single digits. They are now at 60 or 65%. We have seen a drastic change uh, on the chances of a 50 basis point cut. Something that is starting to occur that I warned you would be happening way back when with Lance Lambert. We are still seeing lending, lending for home construction collapse and fall. We have seen a, uh, what is this, a $92 billion fall in lending uh, in 2024. It is the largest decline in 10 years. It is the Fifth quarterly decline in a row. Housing starts are down 16%. Why is this important? Well, again, I as I highlighted when I called this a year ago and was right, what we're seeing is we're seeing the big get bigger, right? The national home builders, the people that don't need the commercial bank to get home construction going. And we are just seeing the small and medium guys get squeezed and squeezed and squeezed. They can't properly do it. They can't get funds. They can't make the numbers pencil at 8, 9, 10, 11%. So you are seeing the big get bigger. They're flexing their balance sheet. They're issuing bonds or stocks, and they are going crazy. But the small and medium, no bueno. No bueno. Not good. Not good at all. 
Something else I want to highlight. Remember, I think it was three weeks ago, it might be four, when the Japanese yen took off and caused that Monday morning bloodbath. You remember that? That was because the Japanese raised their funds rate. I think it was 10 basis points. Might have been 15. Just a little, like a little, little. If we come into Wednesday and the Fed gives the market what they expect, 50 basis point cut, that is going to have ramifications in the currency market. Remember what happened with the Japanese yen is we basically saw the currency market capitulate, which caused forced selling in other assets. I just want to tell you right here, right now, this Monday morning, that we better watch that come Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. What is happening in the currency market? Are we seeing folks out of position? Are we seeing losses there require force selling elsewhere? So again, lots to talk about. Uh, anything else that I want to highlight? Uh, I guess I'll answer one question. I saw a comment yesterday. Uh, we are interviewing a bunch of school members. Two videos out yesterday, two today, one tomorrow. Uh, love those Sunday conversations. Somebody asked, what the heck is happening in February? Well, February 15th and 16th, we are hosting the second, hopefully, annual ORAT celebration. This is where we are going to get together with 400 plus ORAT supporters, people who are doing the work, people who are changing their lives and changing generations. We are going to come together for part celebration, part ed education, part networking, just a good old time. Uh, you are going to hear presentations from at least eight of our millionaires. There will be two or three surprise guests. Uh, my presentations are very different than other events. It will be roughly 25 to 30 minutes of the presenter. And then you could line up. You could line up and ask your questions. You're also going to get six hours of networking. You are going to get fed. I'm buying food for everybody this time, general admission and VIP. Uh, we're going to go uh, for 12 hours on the first day from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., which includes dinner. Uh, and then we'll go from eight to six on Sunday. So uh, lots of stuff going on. You need to be there. It is limited seating. The, the venue only holds 400 people. Uh, so it's time to buy your tickets. It's time to start getting travel. This is off strip. Uh, so you can stay at an Airbnb or stay at your favorite casino. It is off strip. Uh, you can go to my Instagram and, and see videos of the event. Maybe I'll post it again today, but I look forward to seeing you. And then Let's do these. I still have more of these to print out or more of these to do. Uh, but today I want to congratulate Brannon. Brannon was uh, part of our school community. He's doing those infill developments in Texas. And Brannon uh, not only got his first deal, which is, of course, our golden tickets, but he has closed three deals. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and send Brannon four of these. Uh, I do have some more of these to fill out. I will give some more acknowledgments tomorrow. Uh, but yes, again, if you want to get your golden ticket, close the deal. Your first deal, black card. Second deal, you can get as many black cards as you would like. So, folks, that is the daily financial news for September 16th, Monday, September 16th. Like, subscribe, comment. We go live five days a week. Hope you appreciate that. Take care. Later.